My name's Yael Benjamin, and I'm the founder of Startup Snapshot. Today, I'm going to take you behind the scenes into the private and exclusive world of early stage startup boardrooms. Over the past two months, we collected data from 300 startups and their investors. What we saw is that early stage ventures are raising massive rounds faster than ever before. With the larger checks come rising expectations for more sophisticated and demanding board members. The stakes are higher and CEOs are forced to deal with new challenges in the boardroom, ones they often don't have the tools to tackle. 36% of startups reported having a difficult director on their board, a number that jumps to 43% for startups that raised over $10 million. CEOs feel as though these board members are making their lives more difficult, constantly requiring detailed updates, fueling heated debates, and in a surprisingly large number of cases, making their opinions heard through vetoes. 28% of startups reported their board has exercised at least one veto, using it as a way to block unwanted management decisions. This statistic is really alarming, and it alludes to the inexperience of founders who are raising a lot of money before their managerial skills have evolved properly. A company should really always aim for zero veto rights being exercised. And to minimize veto rights being exercised, board members should never be surprised with agenda items being raised for approval, and their consent should be solicited by the CEO as part of informal discussions prior to the meeting itself. Now, investors should also take notice of this statistic, understanding that the exercise of veto rights is a corporate weapon of mass destruction, and it shouldn't be used so frequently, even if it burns for them to approve certain matters that they weren't ready for in advance. Let's drill down into the data to better understand these sources of friction, highlighting four main ways CEOs can get their board members on board, essentially turning them from a management time drain into the ultimate secret weapon. I'd like to suggest that open communication is the number one key factor for any successful relationship, especially one with board members. However, 61% of startups reported they're not fully transparent with their board, often waiting to report challenges or trying to assert an artificial sense of control when things get tough. So let's hear from our VC execs how they see the picture. We find that it's tough for CEOs to get to a place of open and transparent communication with their directors. They struggle to switch from fundraising mode, where they are trying to woo an investor and radiate confidence, to this place of viewing them as board members that are going to see some of the faults under the hood. In order to really tap into the value that only an experienced board member can provide, CEOs have to make this mental switch. They have to commit to open and transparent communication with the intent of making board members active partners in the company. Without transparency, board members are essentially spectators. They receive updates and reports on progress, but are not true partners in the direction of the venture. CEOs should openly report challenges and update about what they're doing to handle them. This builds confidence with board members and it also provides them with opportunities to help. But it's important to understand this transparency is a two-way street. Investors need to create an atmosphere of open communication. It's crucial for them to move beyond opinionated views and instead focus on being a sounding board and mirror for the founders. The second way to get board members on board lies solely in one of the most basic human traits, asking for help. It sounds simple, right? But surprisingly, it's just really not the case. 81% of investors reported they want their portfolio companies to give them specific tasks to help with. They're basically saying, we're dying to help you, just tell us how. But the problem is, CEOs are afraid to ask. 70% reported they're not very comfortable asking their board members for help. So it's really no surprise that the majority of startups don't feel like they're receiving true value from their board. In all the metrics that we surveyed, board members overestimated the value they provide by an average of 20% compared to what the startups report that they're actually getting. Now in today's market, the stakes are higher and early stage startups are playing in the big leagues from day one. They can secure a strong competitive advantage by tapping into the network and expertise of their board. But to do so, 
They have to make it easy for the board members to help them. Basically, help me, help you. First, CEOs must do their homework. For example, if looking for new clients, they should make a detailed list of potential intros. It is crucial to be very specific in stating the name of the person and title within the organization. Step two is to vet and diligence each contact to make sure that the logic is spot on. For example, if you're asking an investor for an intro, make sure he has the history of investing in your sector, company stage, etc. Also, make sure he hasn't invested in a competitor. Step three, when asking your board member for an intro, make sure to include a short blurb that they can just forward with the intro. You're saving them valuable time and making it really easy for them to help. The third way to get board members on board is something all our partners agree on. You should never, ever, never surprise your board. No surprise, unless it's your birthday. And even then, surprises can be nice, but I'll leave them out of the board meeting. A successful board meeting is one without any surprises for both sides. Board members should know exactly what is going to be discussed in the meeting, both the good and the bad. The CEO knows their opinion on each of the issues before the meeting itself through ongoing updates and one-on-one -on -one prep calls. This way, board members come to the meeting not as spectators, but join the discussion as true partners. The time in the meeting can then be focused on strategy and core topics rather than spending precious time on unexpected surprises, disagreements and conflicts that could have been avoided. It is really shocking to hear that today, not all startups are updating board members before the meeting. 22% of CEOs reported that they don't send the deck to board members to review before the meeting. If CEOs want to turn board members into valuable partners, they need to send the board deck and a detailed agenda a couple of days before the meeting. They should also try to have short calls with board members to make sure everyone is updated and aligned. By doing this simple prep work, board members have time to review the data, come to the meeting prepared and ready to add value. To prevent surprises, it's not enough to update board members right before the quarterly meeting. It needs to be done on an ongoing basis throughout the year. Investors reported that they want more frequent communication than they're currently getting from their portfolio companies. The majority of investors reported they want monthly progress updates, monthly coffee meetings, and weekly texts. But only about 30 to 40% of CEOs are actually doing that today. The majority communicate much less frequently. The data clearly shows that startups need to take a more strategic approach to managing communication with investors in general, and in particular with regards to how it impacts the board meetings. Board meetings are not the time to share news and updates, but a time where strategic discussions take place. So I would suggest to communicate in a way which is active, consistent, and transparent. Being active is key. Instead of waiting for questions or concerns to come up, CEOs should be sending out company updates at a certain cadence that suits the startup stage and investor preference. These simple updates trigger conversations, help surface issues, and help the CEOs handle them and tackle them head on. Consistency is also crucial. CEOs should schedule routine catch-up sessions, even if there are no big updates or issues to discuss. This will prevent any surprises in the boardroom and will help to keep the startup top of mind for the value-add investors. Lastly, the key to successful communication is transparency, and it goes both ways. Investor-entrepreneur relationships are like marriage and deserve to be based on mutual respect and transparency. So the importance of proactive verbal communication with board members is clear. Now, let's really deep dive into what that means for written communication, such as monthly progress updates and board presentations. These professional materials are becoming more and more important as startups must live up to these standards of more sophisticated international funds. But on the flip side, they're also a huge management time drain. Let's ask our partners for some tips on efficient reporting. Just copy, right? Find another company that works really well with that investor and see what kind of dashboards, what kind of reporting, what do they do? The board and specifically these international investors really like, uh, like getting, it looks professional, it makes them feel that you're delivering on the level that they're expecting. One hack I can think of has to do with standardization, creating templates, 
building a process on the calendar to make sure that everything has its time and space, including white space, to think about the strategy of what needs to be done in a board meeting. Founders can leverage this new format of video presentations to engage with investors abroad in a very deep and personal way. Creating a video presentation does cost more than a regular presentation, but for you, the founder, it is very, very time efficient. All you need to do is get in front of the camera, pitch your presentation, and Bob's your uncle. We're seeing more and more of these video presentations, especially since COVID broke out. And I believe that as investors get more and more used to this format, it'll eventually become the new standard. Serial entrepreneur Elad Gil once wrote, if your co-founder is like your spouse, then your board members are like your mother-in-law and father-in-law. You're gonna see them regularly, they're hard to get rid of, and they can have an enormous impact on your company's future. With that in mind, I hope these tips we share today will help you create a supportive and fruitful relationship with your board. If you wanna access all the insight and really valuable data that we've collected from hundreds of entrepreneurs and directors, check out our latest Startup Snapshot Report.